today we are about to venture into the captivating world of cinema like never before. I'll be sharing my personal favorite among directors who have mastered the art of poetic storytelling and we will explore why this director's poetic cinema stands as the ultimate form of cinema magic and we will also explore some philosophical thoughts and ideas regarding cinema. Since my childhood, I have been fascinated by films. When I was around 10 or 12, I, with some of my friends, we used to do theater or drama. It was really a very creative process. And I think I was a good actor. But then I used to direct the drama too. And later on, when I got camera, I started to make films and documentary with my friends. But it was all just an entertainment for me and then I really stopped all of it. Then after many years, I discovered true cinema. The very first real film I was exposed to was Persona, directed by Swedish director Ingmar Bergman. This film is really surreal and dreamy. It explores the Jungian concept of shadow and persona of our psyche along with the concept of unconscious mind. After I watched this movie, I wanted to make something like this in black and white with a very few characters. And then I wrote a screenplay for my first film, which you can see here on the screen. It was about a schizophrenic man struggling with his mental illness. But I never tried to make this film and I don't know why. But anyway, Borgman's movie Persona really triggered my journey into the kind of cinema I was looking for. The real cinema, the true cinema, the artistic cinema. And some people call it parallel cinema in India. So he became my first favorite director, Ingmar Bergman. The elements you find in Bergman's movie is very aesthetic and beauty and poetic. And I call this type of cinema spiritual cinema. Let me explain what do I mean by this term spiritual cinema. Cinema is the art of making you aware and conscious of yourself, which is thoughts, emotions, experiences, knowledge, and all the contents of it. Cinema pulls you into the state of now, present. I think cinema is an extreme form of art that puts you into the a state of meditation through its beauty and movements and transitions and acting skills of the actors. And music and its poetic harmony. This is what I mean by the term spiritual or poetic cinema. And all the films of Bergman's falls into this list, the list of spiritual cinema. There is one film which really had a great impact on me. It's called The Mirror by a Russian director, Andrei Tarkovsky. 
first i worship this man not only because of his films but also as a great thinker i think he was a kind of philosopher a poet a devotee a musician a dancer a seeker who expressed himself through his cinema i would like to show you a clip of him so that you can have an idea what kind of man he was andrei cosa è l'arte короче говоря мне кажется что для того чтобы взгляд на искусство следует прежде всего ответить на другой вопрос гораздо более важный и общий вообще зачем человек живет в чём смысл человеческого существования использовать наше пребывание здесь на земле для того чтобы духовно возвыситься это означает что искусство должно наш наше служить так сказать so you saw the clip but i would like to talk about this clip in more detail later maybe at the end of the video let's come back to the film the mirror this film is really abstract dreamy surreal and very otherworldly the beauty in this film is exceptional you cannot take off your eyes from the screen every frame of this film is like painting it's very satisfying it's such a bliss in watching such a beauty that's why i say this is a spiritual cinema because it takes away all your suffering and chaos and disorder and turmoil and puts you into the state of deep silence where there is no more i tarkovsky through his cinema taking you into the state of nirvan Now I will talk about a film called Dreams by a Japanese director Akira Kurosawa. When for the first time I saw this film, I was filled with immense joy and bliss. This film is magical. It does not have a single narrative, but it's a collection of eight dreams. The director had repeatedly. This film talks about childhood spirituality art death and many other things the most fascinating episode of the film is the crows this section is about an art student finding himself inside the world of famous painters van gogh's artwork and by the way i really love this man van gogh So this section crows if you will watch this film your mind will just die and then there is one more episode in this film which i really loved it's called village of the watermills and in this section we see the concept of modern convenience and relation of man with the nature and how death can be celebration and in fact all eight episode are just pure art and i think everyone should watch this film once in their lifetime I have always loved watching Iranian cinema. The first Iranian film I watched was Where is the Friend's House by Abbas Kiarostami. This film is really simple and beautiful. It does not have anything dreamy or kind of surreal structure, but it follows a very simple story of a child who is searching the house of his friend. so that he can return his notebook to him 
Now this is a very simple story, but it really amazes you the journey of that child, the beauty, the aesthetic, and the acting of the child, the way the child acts. That's the really acting. They are not just saying the dialogues. They have this emotion within them. You can see into their eyes, into their smile, into their body movement. The innocence of this child will make you cry a little bit, maybe. This film is set in a village, a very beautiful village. I really love this film because of its purity, simplicity, innocence, and beauty of it. The Turin Horse. It's a film by an Hungarian director, Béla Tár. And this was my first Hungarian film I ever watched. This film has really very laced dialogues, and this is fine because it does not really need any dialogues at all, though it has some. This film is about an old man who is actually a coach driver. and was having trouble with a stubborn horse the horse refused to move whereupon the driver lost his temper and took his whip to it and it is assumed in the film at the very beginning of the film that this is the same old man who was beating his horse and one of the greatest german philosopher friedrich nietzsche threw his arms around the horse's neck and this incident made nietzsche mad so this is the story of that old man it's about his daily life the old man lives with his daughter they are stuck in a daily routine always repeating the same thing from morning to night i love this film it it feels a little awkward to watch this film because we are watching at someone's private life through the lens of a camera it feels like those character does not welcome us and still we are participating in their personal life but the most amazing thing about this film is the long takes it has really long takes the great ones which capture the beauty of the scene and this kind of long takes you will also find in the film of tarkovsky long takes and slow pacing pulls you into the state of pure observations it feels really out of the world and bela tar's movie has great long takes like he one of the longest movie set in tango the first scene of this film is 8 minute long takes without any cuts which is crazy these were some of my favorite directors I still have got more to talk about but i guess i need another video for that For now let's come back to the clip of Tarkovsky Andrei cosa è l'arte? Ci говоря, мне кажется, что для того, чтобы строить любую концепцию, сейчас для одно искусство следует прежде всего ответить на другой вопрос, гораздо более вообще, зачем человек живёт? В чём смысл человеческого существования? использовать наше пребывание здесь на земле для того, чтобы искусство должно наш наше служить, так сказать, для этого. И тем, скажем, я избрал другой принцип э и смысл жизни для себя, очевидно, и в другом смысле, и я бы должен был изобрести что-то другое. Но в силу того, что я свой смысл существования человеческого определяю именно таким образом, мне кажется, что и искусство должно человеку помогать развиваться в этом направлении. То есть, короче говоря, искусство служит для того, чтобы помочь людям духовно измениться, вырасти. 
не знаю, была такая точка зрения, что искусство таким же образом познавательно, как и вся остальная человеческая интеллектуальная и духовная деятельность на планете. Я вообще не слишком верю в возможность познания. Я почти агностик. Знание нас все более и более отвлекает от главной цели, от главной мысли по поводу нашего знания о мире. То есть чем больше мы знаем, тем меньше мы знаем о нем, потому что мы углубляемся и тем самым лишаемся возможности глядеть широко на то, что мы называем жизнью и миром. Искусство служит человеку для того, чтобы помочь ему, так сказать, духовно воспарить art should help men to enhance them spiritually tarkovsky this is the best and greatest definition of what art is in my opinion tarkovsky is i don't really like to use the word philosopher because philosopher are always caught up into the words and ideas and thoughts and concepts models theory they don't really act on them they don't have this action maybe mystic would be the right word for man like him tarkovsky is a mystic he is an enlightened man the more we know the less we know tarkovsky this line the more we know the less we know This kind of line you will find in the religious texts such as Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. These are the line or the phrases that comes out of the state of deep meditation. It, it is not just playing with words and do not art do not help you to know the physical world but an inner world within you. Tarkovsky says art does not help the man to know the world what can you know about the outside world the more you know the less you know tarkovsky taking you into the state of your being the inner self where you can know thyself through his cinema through the poetry through the cinematic experience he is giving you enlightenment So at last I would like to say once again cinema is the extreme form of art or most realistic art that makes you aware or conscious of your inner world so that you can know thyself